magnesium. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depending on what your levels are on the farm. One of the interesting phone calls we had recently on Ag PhD Radio is we had a farmer who called in and said, guys, I just have to tell you, I've really started correlating my soils data with my yield map, and I am finding that when I have high magnesium levels, my yields go down pretty dramatically. Also, when I have the high magnesium levels, I can plainly see I'm low on calcium, I'm low on potassium, so I assume all this plays into it. This magnesium thing is a really big deal. You've got to have enough in the plant to make yield, but if you have too much in the soil, it can inhibit potassium, it can cause major problems with drainage, so we want to talk about those things today. All right, let me start by how important magnesium is. If you go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, type in your crop, say it's corn, say you're raising 200 bushel corn, look at how many pounds of magnesium you need. You need quite a few, yet how many of us are actually fertilizing with magnesium? Well, depending on what part of the country you're in, you may say, well, yes, I fertilize every year. On our farm, we fertilize never. We've got an overabundance of magnesium. But magnesium is critically important to your plant because it is the center of the chlorophyll molecule. As soon as I say that, farmers are like, oh, no wonder I have to make sure I have enough of that. Yeah, it's really important. Where do we see shortages? Well, in some types of clay soils around the country, you may see a lower amount of magnesium in there. With our Montmorillonite clays that we're farming in, we've got high magnesium naturally. Normally for us, the only place we see a shortage of magnesium in the field is in lighter, sandier type soils. All right, here's the example I wanna give you with magnesium to illustrate the point that it's an incredibly small element as opposed to calcium, which is incredibly large, relatively speaking. Okay, so let's say that you're standing in a gymnasium and they stack up 20 feet high worth of volleyballs. So you're standing there and you're covered by, and it's all the way up probably 14, 15 feet above your head, it's solid volleyballs in there. Are you still gonna be able to breathe? Well, yes, of course you will. In soils, what we call that is pore space. There's air space going in between those volleyballs. You get air. All right, now let's say that you're standing in the gymnasium, no more volleyballs in there. They cover you all the way up 20 feet worth of sand. Are you going to breathe anymore? Nope, you're dead. Why? There's not enough pore space for that air to get through. And this is the thing that we talk about all the time with magnesium. In really high magnesium soils, let's say it's 30%, 40%, 50% magnesium. We've had soils that high on our own farm. You will have very low porosity. You'll have poor drainage. There just isn't oxygen getting down into that soil. So what you want to do is change that ratio some, and that's why we talk so much about the base saturation test. We want to see calcium levels at least 65 to 80%. We want to see magnesium levels somewhere in the 12 to 20% kind of range. So if you're outside that 12 to 20% range, you're going to need to do something about it. And then even that range, we talk a little bit about, hey, if I've got a sandy soil, like Darren was just mentioning, a sandy soil, I might want to be up 16, 18, 20% magnesium. The more magnesium you have, the more the soil kind of holds together, the more water holding capacity you have. If I've got a very heavy clay soil, I might want to be down at 12% magnesium. I don't need as much water holding capacity. The clay already does it for me. I want more porosity in that soil. So that's kind of what you can do over a long period of time by adjusting your magnesium levels percentage wise in the soil. Well, when we've got high magnesium levels, we also typically have a higher soil pH as magnesium raises soil pH much faster than calcium does. So sometimes people will say, well, wait a minute, how can adding calcium help my situation? I've already got a pH that's higher than I'd like it. Well, if you can replace magnesium with calcium, you'll actually sometimes bring that pH down over time. The other thing we find with high magnesium levels is potassium just doesn't seem to get into the plant. So again, we wanna take a look at our base saturation levels rather than just parts per million. A lot of people might say, oh, 200 parts per million on potassium, you're in great shape. Uh, no way, I can show you soils where 200 parts per million is horrific. We have terrible deficiencies with potassium. Don't just look at parts per million. You have to look at base saturation K numbers. We want the base saturation K in the four to 8% range. And again, get that magnesium down. If that's in the 12 to 20% range, a lot of times you're gonna find much better potassium availability than if you have magnesium at 40%. So we've identified magnesium can be either too low or too high for your soils to be productive. 
What do you do if you're too low? Well, the cheapest way to get magnesium is often with dolomitic lime. So yes, you're going to get calcium in the dolomitic lime, but you're also going to get quite a bit of magnesium. You can build your levels quickly. There are also other products out there, K-Mag and a number of other magnesium products. So the main thing is if you've got a magnesium deficiency or magnesium issues, it might only be in spots of fields, get that addressed. Now if you're on the other end of things, you have magnesium levels that are far too high. A lot of people to fix those will use gypsum, that's calcium sulfate. The sulfate eventually, hopefully, is going to bind with some of the magnesium to form Epsom salts. Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. Salts are leachable, so if you have good drainage, then all you do is leach out some of the magnesium and the sulfur, and you've replaced that with calcium by using gypsum. Well, you certainly can fix a magnesium deficient soil or a soil that is excessive in magnesium. But what about a soil that promotes our weed of the week? What do you do about that? We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show.